Max Kaiser. This is the Kaiser Report. I'm Stacy Herbert. Apparently, the vampire squid is back to devour us, and only an alien invasion force can save us. Stacy Herbert. Yes, Max. Well, the global financial deflationary collapse that continues to this day, almost three years later, apparently only inflation can save us, and inflation is impossible via the central banks. The only thing that could stop it is... Here's Paul Krugman. If we discovered that uh, you know, space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a, a massive buildup to counter the, the space alien threat um, and really inflation and budget deficits took secondary uh, place to that, um, this slump would be over in 18 months. Twilight Zone economics. So, Paul Krugman over there at the New York Times. All of the stimulus package, the work-ready, shovel-ready Keynesian solutions have all failed, and he's calling on an invasion from outer space to rally the economy to overcome what is essentially still bad behavior in the bank. A historic and unprecedented event has occurred. The question of whether or not we are alone in the universe has been answered. Yeah, and Max, you know, you read the front page of the Financial Times, and it's no more bonkers than an alien invasion as a possible hope. I mean, Paul Krugman's hopes of an alien invasion are no more daft than people believing that central bankers might save us, that they might save our economy. Move to curb Swiss francs rise backfires, as you see there. So traders shrugged off new measures by the Swiss authorities to stem demand for their currency, sending the Swiss franc sharply higher. The franc jumped by 2% in just a matter of minutes as traders ignored the Swiss National Bank's decision to almost double the amount of liquidity available to the money market. Well, look, the central bank is a force that resides outside of the economy, and it's there to provide theoretically speaking, price stability and full employment. That's their charter. But they got sucked into the bank. They got sucked into the parasite that is the banking system. So now, since Earth is no longer available as a location to create a central bank, uh, policymakers and Keynesian brainiacs are saying, well, let's just create a central bank outside of Earth or depend on an invasion from outer space, uh, aliens from abroad. Of course, some would also argue that this is a thinly veiled reference for the need to create more war because people often say, well, World War II got America out of the Depression. So having failed to stimulate the economy by, let's say, imposing the rule of law and by eliminating parasite bankers and imposing true accountability, they want to go and send U.S. servicemen and servicemen from other countries to the front line and get slaughtered so that Paul Krugman doesn't look like an intellectual pygmy. I have used my influence with the High Council to attain an assignment for you. Amglath, Cedric Marlax, I will not fail. Since I am your co-janitor-in-law, this missive might be seen as a family favor. So listen carefully, and I implore you, do not scrap nor this one. You are to be made fuel survey underlord of a wilderness planet at the end of the Nartulium solar chain. Ah, a humocarb planet. I shall rule it. I understand. I will not fail. You will be given an armed, E-grade star cruiser. You will vanquish the planet, enslave its population, and await further instruction. Enslave, then wait. I understand. I will not fail. Well, speaking of war, an act of war has, of course, been declared over the past week. Chavez orders $11 billion of gold home. Venezuela's finance minister Jorge Giordani said that the weakening U.S. dollar, a near default by the U.S. government, and the European sovereign debt crisis threaten Venezuela's savings, and they will be more secure at home and in allied countries. 
Yeah, that's right. The various gold hoards by various countries are not held in those various countries. We've talked at length on this show about Germany. 60% of their gold is held in America. Now, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela is saying, we want our gold, 200 tons of it, uh, to be brought home, held in the Bank of England. And of course, the Bank of England is not the only person holding that gold. The custodians also include banks such as J.P. Morgan. So it's as if Hugo Chavez watches our show, realize that the crash J.P. Morgan by silver campaign could be applied to gold, is demanding physical delivery of his gold because he knows that J.P. Morgan and these other banks don't actually have the physical gold. They have to go into the market to buy that gold, but they're bankrupt to begin with. That means they have to incur more debt, which means that they're going, he's trying to collapse J.P. Morgan just like we're trying to collapse J.P. Morgan. So Hugo Chavez, welcome to the Gold Liberation Army. Yeah, but the, the point is whether or not he'll ever get this gold back because he's put in a request. But is this going to trigger other people demanding their gold back, other nations demanding their sovereign gold back? There are thousands of tons held by Germany in, at the New York Fed. All countries around the world store it in the U.S. Will the U.S. give that back? That's the big question. What do you think? Well, I think no. I think Jim Rickards is correct. Yeah, I would, I would agree with both you and Jim Rickards that these countries, and he's made a big story out of this, he believes that America should commandeer the world's gold, which get, would give them something like 14,000 tons in toto, and make them on the glide path toward having a post-Keynesian, post-fiat currency economy based on having the most gold. But you're right, this is a huge setup for global conflict. So Hugo Chavez says this, Max, Quote, we've held 99 tons of gold at the Bank of England since 1980. I agree with bringing that home. It's a healthy decision. Max, the only way Hugo Chavez is getting that back is if he comes back with an alien invasion force. Hugo Chavez, well, he's good friends with, um, of course, Oliver Stone and Sean Penn and Noam Chomsky. Maybe they can put together an invasion force, uh -huh. go into the uh, vaults in the Bank of England, and liberate Venezuela's gold. <laughs> at, at the least, it could be a great movie. Well, Max, Hugo Chavez is not the only one seeking gold. Gold equals treasuries. The evidence, a stunningly high correlation of gold to 20-year treasuries from July 21st through August 16th is 0.89. Over that period, gold is up 12.3% and treasuries are up 11.8%. I will resolve the conundrum that people are talking about right now on this show. People say that bonds and gold cannot both be hitting new all-time highs simultaneously because that would mean that inflation and deflation are happening simultaneously. Let me break it down for you thusly. The bond market is being bought up by computers. The gold market is being bought up by people who are fearful that the bond market is being bought up by computers. Do you understand what I'm saying? One is real. The people and the governments are buying gold. The other one is fake. A bunch of computers buying treasuries to make it look like the U.S. economy is not as catastrophic as it really is, and that can only last so long. Well, the reason why people are going to gold instead of the treasury, according to this article on Ritholtz.com, gold does not carry a downgrade risk as do treasuries. So this is the beginning. Just like I said, uh, Hugo Chavez pulling his gold out of the Bank of England, this could set a bank a run on the Bank of England and all their gold. This is also the same thing, the downgrade of S&P. This is the beginning of the rush out of treasuries and into gold. It is, it is a run on the bank and to mask the collapse they instructed the computers to buy more treasuries using borrowed money which is only making people buying gold want to buy more gold. Like I said treasuries carry the downgrade risk or at least they did until last week. DOJ probing S&P. The investigation centers on the alleged cases in which the company's analysts sought to award lower ratings on mortgage bonds, but had other S&P managers overrule them. The Department of Justice in America alleges that they began the probe of S&P before the downgrade of U.S. debt. They're going to rewrite that story of the boy who pointed out that the king had no clothes. In this version, the king investigates the boy for having faulty eyesight. Well, so 
I mean, yes, S and P did faulty grade these things, but are Fitch and whoa, 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 and whoa, 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 no, no, they didn't faultily grade these things. That two trillion dollar error, supposedly, according to our buddy Peter Schiff, this was an assumption that certain growth parameters would be met. That there's no way in heck any of that growth parameters will be met. This is a straight up and down, straightforward, honest to goodness report. There is no two trillion dollar error. S and P made the right call. The fact that they're now being vilified by the people that they made the call against doesn't invalidate the call. Well, I'm talking about the mortgage securities when they rated the mortgage securities that have exploded in, across the entire global economy. The S&P rated all of those Goldman Sachs CDOs, they rated them triple A. They rated all of those things triple A that they sold to French banks, German banks, uh, Swiss banks, Italian banks. All of those things blowing up economies were rated triple A by S&P, but they were also rated triple A by Moody's. They were rated triple A by Fitch. Those two are not being investigated as far as we know at the moment because it's only S&P that has downgraded U.S. government debt. Now, this is the question. People are going into gold because treasuries carry a downgrade risk, or at least they did until the Department of Justice sent a message to those who dare to downgrade. I get it. Okay, well, so let's look at where this message is going. Matt Taibbi, a whistleblower, claims that over the past two decades, the agency has destroyed records of thousands of investigations by whitewashing the files of some of the nation's worst financial criminals, the SEC has kept an entire generation of federal investigators in the dark about past inquiries into insider trading, fraud, and market manipulation against companies like Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, and AIG. This is preposterous. I've never approved of anything like that. Our source was the New York Times. Dr. Strangelove, do we have anything like that in the works? A moment, please, Mr. President. Under the authority granted me as Director of Weapons Research and Development, I commissioned last year a study of this project by the Blend Corporation. Based on the findings of the report, my conclusion was that this idea was not a practical deterrent for reasons which at this moment must be all too obvious. So what do you think about this story here, that the SEC is the one that was has deleted files, that is breaking the law, by the way, because according to the law, that they're supposed to save these files for 25 years. You're right. It, it, it adds substance to the idea that there's a criminal racket because the SEC and the investment banks and the fund managers and the rating agencies and other aspects of government are colluding to create this unholy racket of price manipulation, price fixing, and extraction and siphoning of wealth for their own aggrandizement at the jeopardy of destroying society, which they're doing handily. It, it also par partially explains, Max, why Obama keeps on saying we have to look forward, because in fact, there's no way to look back, because all the records have been destroyed. As Dorsey Flynn, the, pr the whistleblower in this case, said, it paints a startling picture of a federal police force that has effectively been conquered by the financial criminals it is charged with investigating. You know, what's also remarkable is that the crash in interest rates, you would think it would spur a refinancing boom for homes. But what they're finding is that there's so much of a mess in the mortgage market that people who could normally refinance and spur the economy, because all the paperwork was fraud, fraudulently um, signed and, and induced, that they, this normal machination of lower rates to spur the economy is not working either. So fraud has just totally blocked any potential growth in the U.S. economy. Max, Matt Taibbi goes on and he says, as one former SEC staffer describes it, the agency is now filled with so many Wall Street hotshots from oft investigated banks that it has been inf infected with the Goldman mindset from within. And the Goldman mindset, Max, what is the Goldman mindset? Greed and suicide banking. And uh, bank until you kill yourself. That's, That's the Goldman mindset. They're suicide bankers. The Goldman Sachs could be the aliens from outer space. They could have spawned a, a banking parasite there at 85 Broad Street before they moved uptown. And, and now they're, they've, they've made their way into all these regulatory agencies. They're the, they're the night of the living dead, or I should say night of the living debt. All right, Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Much more coming your way, so stay right there.